So this is a blueprint project and it's telling me that something still needs to be rebuilt. Like I, I don't know. I don't know what it's telling me. It's okay, so that's enough for of that. Hey guys, today I'll be making an episode about how to start developing games on Unreal Engine 4. So I have the agenda for today um, on this notepad here. And the first step of the agenda will be um, explaining uh, how I came about finding a stable version of Unreal Engine 4 to start working on to make a project. And that version that I ended up choosing was um, 11. Uh, for version 11, uh, so 4.11.2. 4 and one particular reason why I chose that was because uh, it was rumored to um, include the code light source code access um, pl plugin. And so I kind of wanted to use, if you haven't heard of code light, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's an open source editor um, for developing software and um, it's, it seems popular, so I, I kind of decided to uh, try and test it out. So the next thing in the agenda will be to try running um, 4.11.2 with uh, code light 9.1.1. And just to show that um, you can make the, the editor 4.11.1 can, uh, can be configured to um, to run with code like uh, this version of code like as a plugin. Uh, the next item in the agenda is um, just something that you kind of need to do to make the, the plugin work. And then once we get that up and running, uh, the, the last thing in the agenda will be to create a, a first project, and that can either be configured as a as a blueprint. Uh, in other words, uh, an Unreal Blueprint is sort of like uh, a, a template. Actually, I'm showing you guys sort of like a, a blueprint right here. What, what you get as a blueprint is just the sandbox um, of your project, and it's, it's actually fairly, um, fairly a great start. Like you can see, you have, uh, you can go in, you don't have to write any, uh, code or do very much actually and you can start uh, going in and testing out your your game environment so so I found that out um, after going through all this stuff and it seems pretty cool uh, you can also set up like a first person shooter this is a, like a third third person um, view game you can there's a whole bunch of different templates that you can start off with so and you can also decide if you want to do that as just a, a basic template, like a, as, as it's referred to uh, as a blueprint, or you can also get the C++ uh, option, and that'll provide you with some skeleton code and some C++ classes that essentially uh, define your, your character and some various other um, properties within the game. So for so so far, uh, I think that's a good start, and we can start going step by step. Uh, feel free to skip to any part in later in the video if um, if that's something like you're more interested in. And like essentially, now that you have this agenda, you kind of have like an outline of uh, the four parts of uh, today's episode. All right, so let's. Let's go ahead and get started on part one of today's episode, and again, that was to figure out what version um, should we consider at this point. I said I was using 4.7, and there was an issue with that where I couldn't actually use the uh, the code light editor. Um, like when I would go into the project, and for instance, I would like 
uh, try and search for a way to um, bring up code light, it uh, it wouldn't actually. So here's uh, code light, as you can see, and you can see at the moment that I'm able to uh, I'm able to either close it. And if I if I close it, uh, I can I can basically double click, and and then it opens the C class for uh, my project six character dot h, and like I that's basically all I wanted to do. Uh, but even with four point seven six, I wasn't able to do that. So it required searching around a bit and figuring out. Um, and figuring out which uh, version seemed to be most stable. So in the end, I decided um, 4.11, and then I left it running overnight to uh, install and download all of its um, packages. And then um, this morning, I, I opened it up, and then everything seemed to be as, as stable almost as 4.7.6. 4 so 4.11, I can vouch, is pretty stable. Um, so I just did a Google search and it came up to this uh, question that somebody asked and then what version blah 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 is most stable after 4.10 and then I randomly picked 4.11 because of this answer here. Um, and how I have access to 4.11 is if you go to the Epic Games uh, page on GitHub and then you open the Unreal Engine uh, link the, uh, that, that's at the very top here and then you go to the branch version um, to search for different versions of previous stable branches uh, here they're calling they're calling them just like stale branches uh, so then you can go and open 4.11 as you can see and then you can just like click here to uh, download that file or do it from the command line by uh, the clone command and it's about 200 megabytes or so um, so I can show you guys here I can show you guys here that if we go to my folder where I have uh, downloaded the file and I, what I did was just to extract it here, and then it gives you a basic. Um, it, it gives you a basic set of files. The basically the, the files that you see on the GitHub page, um, but then you have to go back um, to the Unreal tutorial that actually um, was talked about in um, my video on how to set up 4.76, and about about that so there's some, some things that I want to distinguish between um, those that previous tutorial and how I actually installed uh, 4.11 so to just dis describe the steps in 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 brief uh, as much as possible I think if you skip a bunch of these steps from this tutorial that I was doing in the previous video um, it actually it actually figures out on its own because of the um, the dot setup uh, the setup dot sh file that is in the uh, Unreal Engine folder so that would be this file so so this file pretty much does everything. I'm not sh exactly sure how, but um, it does everything uh, depending on like their um, update of it. It does everything almost se seemingly automatically, so that's pretty nice. <laughs> and um, so that's how I was able to uh, figure that out. And essentially, it was just from reading this section um, that if you want 4.9 or later. Um, it says like kind of not to install all of these uh, libraries, which made me think like what it's telling you to do here. Um, 
might not be entirely necessary. So I kind of I kind of skipped over this step of depending uh, installing dependencies. This might be necessary, but I pretty much also skipped over like the majority. So all I did was clone the source and then run setup.sh. I might have even skipped over this, um, and then it got to a point where um, it was ready to uh, it was ready to generate the make files or just to run the make file essentially, and it says it, this is still true. Like every time you run setup.sh, it's gonna download approximately like between 2.8 and like four gigabytes now. Uh, for 4.11, I think it was like 3.3 .3 gigabytes or so, or 3.4. And um, it takes a while. It takes like, depending on how fast your internet connection is, it takes a while every time you run it. So you want to just set aside some time, just like go watch TV or something and um, come back. Once that's done, essentially, once you run setup.sh, according to this tutorial, um, all you need to do, in fact, is make sure you run this generate project files.sh, just as it's explained. And in, from there, um, you basically cross your fingers and you can just run this directly in the uh, terminal from, from that folder. Then it should start to compile um, all of these targets, so slate viewer, uh, shader compile worker, whatever these are, Unreal Pack, and then the, the target editor, UE4 editor. Um, so as you can see, like, just these were pretty much the steps that I ran in sequence. And that takes a while to compile, as, uh, to do finish what it's doing as well, which is basically building the software from the, from the command line using um, a make file. So if, if you got through all of that, it's basically a shortcut of my previous video, so I'm not going to say anything more on that. Um, you essentially, um, you can give it a shot. <laughs> so hopefully that, ins that solves all, your, uh, all of your ails, all of the things that are ailing you, and then you can, uh, you can f successfully run 4.11. So I can show how that's done now. I can show that it's true that so if I uh, actually I have to run it from this folder which is already open so uh, so from so once things are installed you can go to engine binaries Linux and then copy and paste this to here which is which is really where I'm already at, and then you run the editor, and it takes a while. I might speed it up a bit. Uh, if any anything in the video that's taking a while, I'll speed up. Sweet, and so that's pretty much done. It's loaded, and you can see I created two projects, and. Where those projects point to in my file system, if I click Browse here, I can um, I can go to that uh, right away, or actually not Browse. <laughs> uh, right click, yeah, right click Show in File Manager. So it actually creates it in this file path, and so this is going to be the default, uh, whatever your squiggly uh, home path is and then um, do under documents and then under unreal projects and you can see that I have two projects uh, you can tell that they're both source code projects because I have these uh, source directories inside of them if I were to create say like a blueprint project that's like a quick way to understand um, to just get jump into like a demo so let's let's do that maybe first um, go to new project and then go to let's say first person and then name the project something so here I'll, I'll just start adding numbers to uh, so don't, they don't conflict uh, make it my project 7 let's say and you can already see that it's pointing to that directory and then do create project
and wait for it to load again. Okay, and so that just finished loading, and we can see what a first-person shooter template kind of looks like. Uh, it's pretty much another sandbox, and we can go inside of that sandbox and start editing things and learning about uh, how to how to develop um, the game, basically. <laughs> I think so. At the moment, uh, I'm just going to click play. <laughs> Actually, well, this is the only thing I really know how to do at the moment, is I know how to like drag stuff into the sandbox. Let's put a cone. That's pretty small. Uh, there's enough cubes. Let's just hit play. Here we go. So, oh, this is gonna shoot projectiles, right? Yeah, you can see. It's so cool. And it looks like they upgraded it because I remember in 4.76 you didn't have this nifty gun at all. So they are making upgrades to the later versions. Uh, I also tried installing 4.15 and that didn't give as much luck because when I did the compile step of um, running the makefile, there were some bugs that, or no, like sometimes you'll get bugs, sometimes you'll just get like a runtime error, like the editor won't actually boot. So that's essentially why um, you need to pick a stable version. So this is a blueprint project, and it's telling me that something still needs to re be rebuilt. Like I, I don't know. I don't know what it's telling me at this point. Cause <laughs> I just shooting these things. Okay, so that's enough for of that, and hopefully that illustrates it. So even if you pretty much know nothing about programming, if you're able to install the editor then you should be able to get into one of these uh, blueprints and then you can pretty much just use it from there. Uh, go look up tutorials on YouTube and other things. Okay, so, so that was part one of the episode. Let's look at part two. So how, how do we... All right, so part two of the episode, as promised, is running Unreal Engine 4.11.2 with CodeLite 9.1.1. And let's show pretty much how, um, maybe just briefly, how you can get, how you can, you might also have to update your CodeLite version. Um, the one I came, the one that I had installed or I tried to install before adding any repositories was the CodeLite 2.5.1, I believe. And I had to go through a few steps, um, which I have um, here to show you guys, but I had to go through a few steps to upgrade that to a much more recent version of CodeLite. So I think 9.11.1 is pretty stable for Mint 17.3. Um, I don't know if Right now is 2017, so you might be able to run Mint 18 if you're really like keen and on top of things. But I'm not I'm not too keen on uh, refreshing my operating system at this point, so I'm gonna stick with 17.3 until I see any reason otherwise um, to really switch to 18. And 17.3 I think is pretty stable. Okay, so this tutorial even applies to 17.1, and so it's telling us that we have to check the repositories um, dot list file and I can show you if we do 
sudo get it copy and paste that link enter our password because it's sudo so as you can see the only repository I have there in there right now is this trusty universe um, rep repository and that's for the code light uh, code base so if you just follow that um, and you running a similar system as myself uh, hopefully that's going to work for you and then once you pretty much do step number two which is all this is doing uh, you can check your synaptic or you can do it from the command line by running apt-get install uh, code light and you have to do an update before you're doing that and then you can you should be able to install this newer version of code light uh, that I'm showing here okay so that's all for part two at the moment and so what was part three yes so in order to get the plugin uh, you can either so explaining what this plugin is all about first of all let's say um, the plugin is located in the following folder, as I recall. And if you go to plugins and you go to developer, you can see the code where the Code Light plugin, um, Code Light source code access plugin, is supposed to be sitting. So, how to install that? Right, so I'm going to try to explain quickly, uh, briefly, how to install that if by any, by any means you might need to um, rebuild it or get it to work inside of the editor. Like, for, in like it, for instance, Okay, so for instance, we um, say you go into the edit menu and then you look f within plugins, uh, bring up this window from the drop down menu, and under programming, I believe, um, Code Light uh, should be here, uh, and also the 4.11 of Unreal Engine. For should automatically have installed it, but say for whatever reason it wasn't here, or you needed to build that plugin because it's not working properly, or whatever. Mainly, if you don't see it here, then you know that it's not installed, right? And so, in that case, and that applies for really any plugin, I believe. So, my understanding of plugins is that it needs to be under one of these plugin folders, first of all, and second of all, is that there's a procedure explained in the um, in the Unreal the official Unreal page for Linux where it describes how to install arbitrary plugins. So that can be found, for instance, for the Code Light plugin. Um, I think you're able to find it if you Google that, and maybe also. I think it's the third one. So, if you were to download this, you might you would also be able to um, to directly copy and paste it. But the the only difference I think is that the binaries folder would not be actually present, and so if the binaries folder was not present, you would have to go and look up. Um, the procedure for um, how to get that binaries folder to build from the command line, and you go here to uh, the the main tutorial from the Un Unreal Engine page, and go search for known issues. Uh, there's a secondary page called known issues, and then from that page, just there you might notice that there's a section that tells you how to use. Um, 
the plugins with the IDEs for, for the IDEs and for the if in, in general these actually it's not listed here but like for instance on Linux there's kdevelop there's Eclipse there's sublime text there's these other ones and the key part that you have to read maybe a little bit carefully is that you got to um, essentially copy and paste that um, plug into this directory then CD three directories up back to the engine folder actually maybe four <laughs> three or four back to the engine folder and then you have to go and type make UE editor 4 and then it'll essentially populate that folder that was missing. So this binaries folder, if it was missing, then that's how you would get it to build with the UE editor four. Um, so that it would load that. So it's like a so it's like a separate module that needs to be loaded. Otherwise it doesn't work. So thankfully that that works and hopefully that that's not going to be an issue though because uh, if you install 4.11. So the next Thing in the agenda again I think was to set this up as um, in the dot init file so I can show you first I'll just summarize what just uh, as a as a small note what, fol what folder that's supposed to be in so again you should see it in the folder developer so I was referring to that folder and that should summarize uh, that whole discussion but this first part here um, how to change that file is if we go to if we now go to this folder you're gonna see this uh, Linux engine dot init file and if you copy and paste it into a text editor, uh, all you need to do is just make sure that this is set to code light. And then once you start the engine, um, you will be able to interface with code light from the Unreal uh, from the editor. So I have that set, so it's not an issue. But actually, make sure that you set that once you. Uh, before you get going with uh, 4.11 because uh, I think this is set to like null or something uh, by default so I recently changed this so that uh, it's working but if, if I set that up it does something funny where I can even show you guys but I'm not sure if that's so interesting but um, that would be the last step so okay so that's the last step and Part four, part four. So for the last for the last part of the episode, part four, um, what I want to show is how to create a C plus plus project. So let's do that now. So that will require closing this and restarting it. So we close it, and to restart it, we go back to the command line. We do control C to clean that up, and then we just restart it. Okay, so we are in the editor again, and I'm wanting to show you guys uh, what you might need to, how what this looks like to actually start a C++ project and what you should be looking forward to to know that everything is configured properly so that you can uh, start working with your editor plus the code light editor on the side so if we just go back and now we see that we have five to seven so we'll just make that eight not five make that eight and make sure that this is the correct directory and again, I want to do actually a first-person shooter just so that 
Well, it doesn't really quite matter. I think what I'm showing now is just show that everything's configured. Mm -hmm. What's a side scroller? <laughs> okay, let's do vehicle. Let's do vehicle advanced, because <laughs> just so that we learn something new. The vehicle advanced template features a more complex vehicle than the regular vehicle template. Vehicle movement can be controlled with either keyboard, virtual joystick, a lot of stuff. So let's create that project. It's going to create the project, and then it's going to tell you that it's generating the project files, generating data for project indexing, and etc. So you should you should see that. And sometimes, oh, I better say one last thing. So there's a reason that this might not show up, and in your editor, um, there's something that you should look for. So I'll, I'll mention that once this is done loading, or once I get a chance to go back into the editor. Uh, another thing I wanted to show before we, before we finish was that um, I had mentioned earlier in the video that uh, sometimes it might not detect that there is an IDE installed on your system and the way to kind of force it to be able to uh, find what IDE you, you're wanting to use is to go <clears throat> here into the editor preferences and then click here under source code editor and then configure it to be um, pointing to the code light uh, development uh, editor. Okay, so just always make sure that that's uh, enabled, assuming you want to use code light. Okay, so that just finished loading, and what I want to do now is first show that if the code light plugin is set up properly that you will actually um, after hitting that build project uh, start the project load project or whatever um, it should immediately go into this um, instance of code light and that's due to one other thing which maybe I should say is that you need to configure your operating system to actually make the dot workspace files that code light um, that that are gen that are generated for code light projects um, you need to make them point to um, code light so here it's done automatically but um, if it's not set as the default application for dot workspace files then um, it's not going to be able to open automatically essentially so to do that you can just click on code light if it's down the list somewhere else and then click set as default and then you might have to restart some things but um, essentially that's why that worked um, a bit seamlessly so the next thing is then for our project um, there's two there's two folders that um, we first uh, need to be concerned with and just in for, just in terms of procedure, I haven't really had time to like look at both of them, but um, as I understand, they both have the source folder. And if you click, say, on the source code for the project, it's it's doing something right now. I think this has to do with the code completion uh, feature of Code Light. So, but let's see if I can click on project eight. Okay. Great, so that worked, and also this one. So you can pretty much browse any of these uh, C++, C++ fold, uh, files within the folder, and maybe once this parsing is done, um, the code completion is gonna work, but I haven't really been playing with this all that much, so I'll just let that finish and see if I can do a simple demo of that.
Right, so that parsing, it just actually uh, just finished, and I want to test now if the code completion is there. So it seems that it is because I'm just copying the line that's directly above it so I can see in advance um, all of the members of this hierarchy of um, objects. And if I wanted to start programming stuff, I could, uh, I could get started. But I'm just going to leave that as is because that's not what I want to show for now. Um, So what I'd like to show is how to build the project 8 editor folder. Um, and the reason that we'll have to do that is so that, well, maybe I can just show. The reason that pro we have to build project 8 is because uh, it's going to search for that. Um, remember when we built the blueprint, um, it restarted the program, or it essentially loaded, tried to load that blueprint. So the blueprint, it has those things uh, done automatically, but essentially if, if you're running a C++ project, it's going to look for um, something at, at the output, uh, it's as, as the input to loading the program with the, the game, uh, depending on what you have for your source code. So let's go ahead and build that, and I'll show you uh, why that. It's going to take a while, though, so just got to be patient. Um, I did make a mistake. I have to click this as development, and I think that when we build it again this time, that it will um, it'll work properly. So I'm really hoping that will be the case. So we'll probably have to wait again for all of that to occur and start um, again once um, once this is done uh, compiling. Okay, so now it happens to be working as expected, <laughs> and I'll just again review uh, what it is that I did. In code light, I just m m forgot to make sure to set this uh, development, uh, the, the build release, uh, the release build to the development build. So you have to make sure to do that, otherwise it's going to uh, <clears throat> ask or complain about uh, which of these projects. It, it actually probably doesn't build this file, so that file is now there, and we can expect the editor to, to load probably very shortly. All right, guys, so we've come upon the last part of today's episode, and as mentioned, uh, the project that we're testing out is a advanced vehicle template, and this is actually my first time looking at this template myself. Um, and in fact, <clears throat> as, as we just saw, we, we built a C++ version of the project, so if we go into we click down here and we go into C++ classes and we look at my project 8. Uh, at the moment it's open down here. See what happens if we double click. So. So that's great. So if we double click, it opens the my project 8 pawn.h and from that we can see that the 
the Unreal Editor and the Colite Editor are integrated with one another pretty seamlessly uh, due to this, um, to due to the Codelight plugin. And again, that was um, the one that we discussed earlier, um, and is listed under the um, plugins directory. Uh, that would be this one. Um, so let's just look back. Is, is there anything that we didn't cover in our agenda? Which I think uh, the answer is uh, no, <laughs> uh, not really. So to summarize, we, we went through steps one to four. We used a stable version of Unreal Editor 4. Uh, we built a project and we're editing that project now with uh, Unreal Editor 4.11.2 and code light version 9.1.1 and we were able to do that because we set up these um, configurations in the in these in the following directories uh, in the following file and then within our editor we made sure that we can view that the code light plugin is enabled as shown here and also that our Unreal Engine editor is pointing to our actual code light editor, which is here. So again, that was all that what I wanted to really show in today's video. So hopefully you have a context for understanding uh, why this is fairly uh, why this is fairly necessary to get ourselves uh, up and running. So today's episode was mainly a getting started style of uh, video and hopefully it gets you started on your own um, development of Unreal games and as a last thing let's just click play and go inside of our sandbox again and see what see what this template does uh, for us interesting Let me just pause it quickly. Jesus. I'm going to start off the track and then this is pretty difficult. Like, this is like impossible. Okay, I think my first try was the best.
thank you guys for watching today's video and hope you enjoyed it. And as always, uh, yeah, I really appreciate that there's, you know, people out there that watch these videos. Alright, until next time, see you in the next video.